right, everybody. So uh, today we've got uh, Ryan Smite from the Atlantica Party running here in Antigonish County. Uh, so we're here, uh, it's part of our interview series with the candidates that are representing our riding in this provincial election. So just gonna pass it off to Ryan for like a few questions, uh, just about his campaign in general, a little bit about himself, and then some of the issues that are specific to the uh, student experience. So just to start it off, Ryan, uh, would you mind like just telling us a little bit about yourself, like just like some hobbies, hometown type of stuff, uh, like really whatever info you really want to talk about? Sure, sure. Um, well, I was uh, born in Galt, Ontario, which is now Cambridge. Okay. Uh, you know, a born and raised there. You know, I went to Wilfrid Laurier University. Nice. Uh, I left for Korea, uh, taught there for a, a few years, and uh, got into the software industry there. Nice. And uh, I've been in you know software ever since. Um, the, uh, you know, at, I spent probably around 14 years or so in Korea and, wow. I, you know, moved to Malaysia, um, uh, met my wife, uh, 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 moved to Australia where she was doing her, uh, uh doctorate in, uh, finance. She teaches here. No, nice. wow. Lots of travel. <laughs> yes, eh? yes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, in, uh, after she finished her, uh, doctorate, Mm -hmm. uh, we moved uh, uh, back to Canada in, in uh, 2015, okay. and in 2016, uh, she started teaching here, and nice. uh, so we moved out uh, here to uh, Anaganesh. Um, for uh, what, what I do, um, I work in the uh, blockchain space, nice. you know, on a project called Zaya, where we uh, put games on the blockchain, fully decentralized, permissionless, trustless, yep. serverless, eternal, unstoppable, censorship resistant. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, the uh, you know, I've been working you know, do, doing a lot of you know work in uh, uh, video games for years, you know. So uh, you know, and this is really sort of like a, you know, a next level. Oh, for sure, and like integrating that process into the blockchain as well, which is completely new realm that's got to be pretty exciting too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, one of the things that I think is probably the most important and other people are a little bit more skeptical mm -hmm. uh, than I am but uh, is the human mining model which okay. is a, uh, a what we originally uh, called this method you know back in uh, 2014 2013 14 when hunter coin came out and that was the predecessor to uh, Zaya. Okay. And it's a play to earn model. So basically, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we'll have these uh, cryptographically secure, you know, digital assets, mm -hmm. NFTs, whatever, DAOs, yeah, yeah. De you know, everything trading on a DEX or whatever. Um, so people can go out, play a game, and make money playing a video game. Right. Now, if a video game uh, gets popular, mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to do for the third world? Oh, in terms of actually creating jobs, creating like new businesses and centers that might not have had it before. Yeah, you know, you're going to have you know some kid in the third world come home, start playing outside. Dad's going to come and start whipping them. Get back inside, start playing that video game, make us some money. <laughs> I joke about that, but uh, you know, like uh, you'll be able to have kids, you know, making money probably more than their dads. Uh, just basically you know? through these servers that you can now like like in the human play type, to earn yeah human mining you know i think it's going to help lift people out of poverty mm -hmm. oh um, fair enough you know some people are uh, skeptical you know more skeptical than, that than mm -hmm. i am uh i happen to be a believer yeah oh no that's but, fantastic so, so yeah just um, kind of cracking into that into that side of things yeah. Yeah. okay so, well, that's pretty cool so that's a lot of like what you're doing right now in antigonish working yeah. on that and also just like being part of the community, you got your your wife obviously teaching. Is she teaching in the elementary school system? Oh, geez. No, 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 no. She, uh, she teaches uh, in the business department here at Santa. Oh, okay, Baptist. nice, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, awesome. So, uh, yeah, she's teaching you know like just courses on finance and banking and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's awesome. What was it that kind of got you more driving into the world of politics and entering that sphere of things? Because I hate it. Okay. I hate politicians, and I, I hate politics, mm -hmm. and I hate what's being done, you know, and they're going in the absolute wrong direction, you know, okay. like, the, like the, the, other, the other parties, you know, they're all going in the exact same direction, just at different speeds. 
Okay. You know, um, the Atlantica Party is fundamentally different. Yeah. You know, like they're really, really fundamentally different. There's, you know, like there's no comparison whatsoever. Right. You know, you look at the, poli- the policies of these other four parties, and and what they're doing, and it's kind of like, just roll the dice. Who cares? It's just a matter of you know wh- wh- where how fast you get to that angle mm-hmm. uh, there. Um, you know, so I just you know, want to just you know do something about it, just try and turn things around yeah. so that you know we can actually live in a decent society. You know, uh, the Atlantic Party is you know yeah. basically you know free markets and whatnot. Yes, yes. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, you can have solutions to mm-hmm. problems that are different from the other four because the, the, the other four parties, all of their solutions are. We're going to spend more money. It doesn't matter what policy you look at. You know, right, it, okay. it's, we're going to spend more money. We're going to have more debt. Mm-hmm. That's their answer to everything. You know, you know, if you look at it, that's not a solution. That's not a solution to a problem. Just in terms of, so like trying to think about it from the way of creating like free market solutions to the issues that are already ongoing without having to drive up that expenditure every single time kind of thing yes you know that and more like yeah, uh, yeah. you know i have a few policies you know like uh <clears throat> you know that i wrote a while a while back one was uh alleviating the healthcare crisis through efficient use of human resources and basically it costs zero and yeah. you can reallocate uh Human resources, you know, inside of the healthcare system that are already existing, that are already existing, right? You know, and you can get better outcomes. You can reduce costs. You can increase the level of service. You know, through just kind of rejigging the way that you have things set up within the healthcare yeah, industry. Yeah, you know, uh, another one. You know, alleviating the healthcare uh, crisis through positive incentives. And this is this is just about you know incentivizing doctors. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's it's very very short. Um, there's a lot of background in that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, doctors that work overtime should be permitted to bill against insurance tickets uh, beyond their contract of 30 patients per week. Uh, that is, that they be permitted to bill for overtime through insurance. And if you do that, you know, you're incentivizing doctors, you know, to work more, see more patients, mm-hmm. you get more doctor hours. People always say, oh, we need more doctors. Well, what if you had doctors working just a little bit more? Right. You know? And sudden, you're actually providing an incentive for them to do so if they want to. Exactly. Right. And the cost to do it is zero. It costs nothing. You know, you can have policies, you know, that don't cost money, is, you know, that, mm-hmm. have, that have real impact. Right, right. You know, but, you know, so, you know, the reason why I'm running, you know, is just simply to, you know, get some of those ideas out there. Mm-hmm. Because you know, in the in the mainstream media, you'll never hear about any of this. Right. You know, um, the these sort of ideas are kind of you know blacklisted because they go against the traditional narrative, which is spend more. Right. You know, spend more, more debt. You know, one of the biggest problems uh, in you know, pretty much every country is money printer go burr. The central bank, you know, printing money and uh, you know debasing the currency. Just and, and, yeah. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of problems fall out from there, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I just want to sort of, you know, get some of these ideas out there for people. Yeah, hundred percent. Give them an option, you know. I, I, I'm not going to get into office, you know. I, I'm not worried about becoming an MI. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't want to go to Halifax. Right, right. Um, it's just really but, about driving that, like, communication, education yeah. side of things. Like, these policies do exist this party does exist and like here kind of kind of the driving factors behind it yeah people are ambitious people want to go out and work they want to do better for their family yeah yeah. you know when people get to a certain point you know and they have enough money you know what what do i do you know like i've got more money than i know what to do with you know let's go and you know you know help some people because you know that's that's very satisfying Oh, 100%. You know, There's no better feeling, right? Yeah, you know, like uh, my wife, you know, uh, runs, uh, you know, uh, does some charity work. Okay, nice. Who, she, uh, who does she work for? Or uh, who does she volunteer with, sorry? She doesn't actually have a formal foundation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she you know, goes around, you know, to friends and colleagues and relatives mm-hmm. and, you know, anybody, you know, and says, okay, you know, we've got a problem here. Her, the current one is, uh, 
the COVID uh, problem in Vietnam and the, the extremely harsh lockdowns there. So she's trying, uh, it's putting people literally, you know, at risk of starving to death because they can't go anywhere. They can't do anything. They can't earn any money. They can't, you know, so she's trying, uh, you know, trying to, you know, she's raised money, you know, uh, and she's giving it to specific people that she knows there in order to, you know, get food to families that are in risk of starving. Yeah. You know, and, wow. uh, uh, that's, that's wild. You know, she's, uh, uh, she's done, uh, you know, uh, fairly well there, you know, and, you know, you know, yeah. you know quite, you know, I- impressed with what she's done. Oh, for sure. Well, and it's a valiant cause as well. Like, it's, it's wild. Yeah. Like I'm not too familiar with the with the issue myself, but yeah, like 100. percent Like that's that's good to see, and it's something that kind of it needs to be communicated, right? Yeah. My wife is Vietnamese. She's from. Vietnam. Okay, so she so she went back and is providing like that kind of. She, she's no, 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 no. She's still here. Providing but, that but, aid but from she knows here. people on the ground. Yeah. Okay. You know, like, you know yeah. that she can trust to actually get the money where mm-hmm. it goes. You know, because like a lot of charities, you know, like 90 percent of it goes to the to the directors and staff. You know, and then ten, you know, ten and, and fundraising, actual, and ten percent actually makes it to you know the people that need right. it. So, like, just overall, just to kind of sum up, like high level, just what got you into politics in the first place is really just seeing the change that you want to make and actually taking the steps to be that change yourself. It's kind of like the overarching, like even if, like even if you don't become the MLA for this riding, even if it's like even if there's not a huge amount of like electoral success it's about getting that message out there uh yeah. for people who might want to see a change yeah yeah help introduce you know the idea of freedom and free markets and you know how these solutions you know can yeah. solve problems you know faster easier cheaper you Fair know, enough. than yeah. what's going on yes okay perfect so that uh kind of takes me into the into my next question which is more about like kind of like the key issues that you and your party are seeing like for Nova Scotians this election. So we know that there's obviously a number of key issues that are facing like all Nova Scotians and like youth in particular, uh, a fair few. Um, So like what issues do you see as the largest challenges this provincial election? Probably the largest challenge is that the issues in the media are completely off base. Okay. They're not. They're not. They're not addressing the real problems. They're addressing symptoms. Okay. So, so yeah, would you mind just giving a couple of examples? Right. Uh, so, for example, mental health. Mm-hmm. You know, th- th- this has uh, come up. You know, as a, as a problem. Yeah. And, you know, well, what do you need for that? You need more doctors. Or, or mental health and healthcare. Yeah. Um, healthcare is always a big issue here. You know, it's, uh, somewhere around forty percent or so of the budget yeah for sure is, every single time it is you know it's a massive amount mm-hmm. uh so the, they're always saying oh we need more doctors you know we need you know more specialists we need you know more you know facilities you know et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and this is just a symptom of the problem okay you know this isn't this is not the real problem you know yes okay you need more doctors but how do you get doctors? You know, these people, they're very smart. Mm-hmm. They go to school for a long time. They put yeah. in a lot of work, a lot of effort, you know, and they deserve to be compensated, you know, for their efforts and for the work that they do. So you have to pay doctors. Yeah. Well, how do you pay doctors? All the other parties are to say, well, we're just going to, you know, have a deficit, I guess, you know, we're just going to spend more money. And, it's a stupid solution. By you know, driving that, the, driving the budget up, where you yeah, think it might just be a. It, it doesn't work, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, you know, how much are we spending on debt service? Just uh, give me half a second. Oh, yeah, no worries. Take your time. Uh, where's the? I got to change my glasses to my reading glasses. Here. <laughs> yeah, debt servicing costs are currently six percent of revenue. That's a lot. Now that's actually lower than in the last election when it was nine percent. So nine percent of their operating or their of their revenue, sorry. Uh, in the last election, uh, at the time, nine uh, percent of all provincial revenue mm-hmm. uh, went to debt service. Wow. Now it's six percent currently in in the in, in the current budget. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, but the debt is still going up. It's not reducing. So it's you 6% know? of a larger number than it was. Yeah. So completely going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. We need to fix the economy in order to fix health care and mental health. Okay. Because yeah. if, you want, if you want more doctors, you just need to hire more. But you need the money. Right. Fix the economy. You've got the money. You can hire the doctors. You've got the yeah. You've got the supply to be you able know? to dole out yeah and meet the demand. The it, it, it's it's and you it's just not that complicated, you know, to to fix some of these problems. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, so. But the, the solutions of the other parties are always just spend more. Yeah, and spending more from dwindling revenues it, it doesn't work you know you're better off having more revenues yeah. you know than you actually can you know spend on you know some of these uh, you know services and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, you know build the infrastructure um, for uh, I can go on a long, a long time. No, know, for sure about that. You but know, no, but, like, uh, uh, so I, so I hear you there. So just like to kind of summarize, and feel free to add a little bit more if you sure. want to. Um, but just kind of like a lot of the issues that we're seeing in terms of it's so like, and just as an example, the healthcare mental mental health uh, side of things is really just a symptom of the market not being not working as efficiently as it as it could under different circumstances. And just like if you push that piece get that, that financial supply in there so that you can actually touch on the issues rather than driving it up? It's not so much that the markets don't work. Okay. You know, uh, it's that the government interferes in the markets and distorts them and creates malincentive. Okay. Um, yeah. The, uh, uh, or, or malinvestment. You know, so investment goes into the wrong things because they've got policies that incentivize the wrong things. Okay. You know, if they can just you know get out and let, uh, let people you know decide where to allocate you know funds resources mm -hmm. you know it's going to work a lot better. Right. Let me put it this is very very simple. Yep. You know I think that you know almost anybody can understand. Um, that's that's and that's if, perfect. Yeah. If you have fifty five computers working to solve a problem, mm -hmm. and then over here you have a million computers working to solve the problem, which 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 set do you think is going to you know, come up with better solutions to the problem. Like, I'm going to go with that a million. Yeah. Yeah. 55 MLAs versus, uh, you know, 900,000, you know, close to a million, you know, Nova Scotians. Right. You know, they can probably, you know, outthink 55 MLAs with, you know, a, you know, a, a one size fits all solution for everybody. Right. Because not everybody has the same situation. You know, people are older, younger, have more money, have less money, have property, have debt. Have, you know, assets, you know, um, are sick, are healthy, you know, combine all these things together. And now you're going to try to solve all these problems for all these different people. It's, it's not going to work. You just, yeah. it's, it's, this system is just simply too complex. And those one million people, you know, can solve those problems, mm -hmm. you know, much better than, you know, 55 people with one size fits all. So it's really about like just opening up that process to just more human efforts and connection and ingenuity in the free market. Yeah. If you let people, uh, you know, people, 55 people aren't going to be able to identify problems as quickly or as easily as a million. You get these, uh, you know, people in here, you're going to have some kind of entrepreneur who finds a problem and says, listen, you know, this is a real issue. And, uh, I think I know a way to solve it. And, you know, you're going to have entrepreneurs that fail, mm -hmm. you know, like I've had failed ventures, you know, and, you know, I've had successful ones. Yeah. Um, but eventually, you know, you get people solving problems in new and novel ways that nobody ever thought of. Yeah. <clears throat> like, um, uh, here's a, a, an example. Thomas Edison invented the uh, phonograph and it never took off. Yeah. Until Alexander Graham Bell figured out a better way, you know, to have his uh, was a, a gramograph or whatever it was, you know, and he was able to commercialize, you know, it. 
So you have, you know, basically, you know, record players, you know, at a basic level developed by, you know, Thomas Edison, you know, perfected by Alexander Graham Bell. And then you've got, you know, all like from there, we have the entire recording industry. Right. You know, and, and it just is just ingenuity building off ingenuity, building off ingenuity. Yeah. And, you know, it was one guy here and one guy here, two guys, you know, that basically pioneered, you know, we're, we're, what we're working in today, you know, recording. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's, it's these, these people, you know, there are lots of them across so many different examples. Yeah. You know, but 55 people, a pool of 55 people, a pool of a million. Where do you want to look for solutions? So overall, it's just looking at these key issues as almost symptoms. Oh, geez, sorry, I keep dropping that. But almost taking a look at these key issues as symptoms of us being able to do better in terms of how we decision make. Yes. Okay, fantastic. I, and I, I really do like that answer. For a lot of the people in our community uh, that we see every day, like affordability has become like a, a huge issue for, for a lot of us students. Kind of speaking more on like, on like the employment and also like the tuition side of things. So what we've seen largely is like tuition and books and supplies and housing like really going going up in cost but then on the work side of things a lot of us don't we can't necessarily get that experience that work experience as students so then when we leave here we may not be able to stay and then we may not be able to continue affording to go to university because that experience that because those those opportunities might not necessarily be there in the moment so like the question is just like what are some of the ways uh, in which like you and your party would would think to like support students to ensure that like that financial barrier isn't the reason why we don't end up finishing our degree and I know it's a tough yes. one. yes yeah 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 the uh, <clears throat> the Atlantic party uh, supports school choice mm -hmm. now uh, along with that uh, you know, goes a whole whole range of things but that's sort of more aimed at the uh, uh, you know K to 12 okay yeah, um, yeah you know not so much the university uh, student so uh, let's set aside uh, you know K to 12 for sure um, the it, for university students, you know, the, pro the, the problem, again, is market interference and whatnot, and money printer go burr, mm -hmm. and the Cantillon effect. Okay. What, uh, what, what we've seen since 2008 is an utterly insane amount of money printing. Now, this has made the people at the very top, you know, very close to where they get the money. This is the Cantillon effect. Um, they get, you know, a lot of that money and they enrich themselves. But at the same time, uh, the money printer at the bottom, you know, where, where we are, you know, like, uh, it robs us of purchasing power. So your $1 today will buy you $1 worth of goods. Your $1 next year will buy you 95 cents or 90 cents worth, worth of goods. goods. Yeah. In the United States, 40%, I, I saw a statistic, 40% of all US dollars in circulation were printed in the last year. Wow. Now, in Canada, the inflation rate for 2020 uh, on the M2 money supply, I, I, I don't know how the other number was calculated, uh, it was 18.5% inflation. Now, when this, what happens when this money starts uh, getting down, um, p eventually, you know, people at different levels start getting it. You never get it down here. You know, it just robs you of purchasing power. It's just inflation you know, going up. The, the you know, same. like like the, the, the working class, the middle mm -hmm. class, the uh, the lower classes. You know, the poor. You know, they lose entirely. So for them, these prices are all going going up, while these other people have excess money. Now, what do they do with this excess money? They've got to put it somewhere because the value of the dollar is decreasing. Their mm -hmm. purchasing power, if they keep dollars, is decreasing. If you're holding Canadian dollars, you're pretty stupid. You know, 
because your the value is going down. So what what people do is they invest in stock markets, they invest in the real estate markets, yeah. and we've got massive bubbles there. Your rent as a student is going up because people are buying buying properties you know yeah. at ever increasing values because they always have to outbid each other because so much money is coming down in september of 2019 the ver the, re uh, the reverse re repo market just exploded you know <clears throat> so we're in the financial crisis of you know 2008 never really stopped it was just kind of um you know stop gapped by you know, uh, uh by uh, money printing and lowering of inflation rates. Mm -hmm. And the central banks have all said that, you know, they're going to go negative with, in the inflation rates. Now, this, this, is, this is directly affecting students, you know, because their purchasing power is being lost. You know, any money they make, well, they, you know, if it costs $10, well, now it costs 15. Yeah. You, you're losing, you know, about this, but this isn't an issue that, you know, can really be, uh, uh, ad addressed directly uh, on the provincial level, you know that's a federal issue. Yeah. You know, so the way that th those kinds of issues need to be addressed um, is by, <clears throat> you know, tr trying to fix the economy as much as possible in light of this monetary debasement, in order to get the economy going, yeah. and that's going to include things like developing natural resources, you know, responsibly, mm -hmm. you know, because we've got lots of natural resources here. You know that uh, we can tap into and we can create jobs there yeah you know you can employ students there you know and they can make some very good money right but the political willpower to do that is zero right now you know because they think well you know coal is dirty and whatnot or whatever okay yeah sure you know when you look at a hundred year old technology yeah you know coal may not be the best uh, 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 cleanest energy mm -hmm. uh, for uh, electricity yeah but if you look at some of the current technologies they're remarkably clean you know comparatively and the w when they're put when they're pushing things like uh, windmills and solar panels this is, just about this is just this is just insane okay. you know because it's driving up the price of energy the cost to produce um, solar panels and uh, wind is turbines, yeah. uh, wind turbines yeah. is astronomical okay. um, the, the real answer to you know uh, uh, energy uh, is in uh, uh, basically uh, you know well hydro is a clean it's mm -hmm. a great source of energy yeah um, nuclear clean the tech nuclear technology today is absolutely wonderful yeah um, if you want uh, one uh, one step up on nuclear you look at thorium molten salt reactors which uh, they're still in development, okay. but they cannot melt down. It's just not possible for them to mm -hmm. melt down and have you know some kind of an accident like Fukushima, yeah. um, or you know uh, Three Mile Island or you know, whatever Chernobyl. Uh, also, a thorium uh, nuclear cannot be weaponized. Fantastic. So you know you know that's that's a great you know yeah. incentive. You know, like what, what, what would you rather have? You know. You know the threat of nuclear war or no threat of nuclear war <laughs> you know and then there's uh, uh, one, uh, one more very promising uh, uh, energy source and I think if this one works it's probably going to be the <clears throat> the absolute solution okay uh, there's a project called the Sapphire project it's a bunch of uh, plasma cosmologists plasma physicists and what they've done is they've replicated the Sun in a lab on earth the same kinds of temperatures of the sun. Jeez. Wow. Okay. And what they're doing now, I, I forget the name of the company, um, uh, but they're uh, raising venture capital to okay. uh, bring it uh, to a commercial scale for energy. Mm. Now, w w with with that, you know, your energy costs are going to come, you know, way down. Yeah. You're not going to be paying, you know, you know, 13, 15, you know, cents 15, or 20 cents or whatever it is you know, uh, per kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to dive down whatever, you know, like this, uh, you, know, it, you know, I don't know what, what it would be, maybe it'd be like, you know, three cents or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those things in the economy, that are distorted by bad regulations that keep driving up prices, you know, and it's not, it's not just students, it's everybody that's suffering. 
the, the problems that students have are the exact same pro problems yeah. that you know, like uh, the working poor have, that the, 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 the middle class has. Yeah. Um, minimum wage, absolutely horrible, terrible thing. The proper minimum wage is exactly zero. That's a volunteer. So if you want to volunteer to do something, you should be free to do that, right? Right. Now, you know, if, uh, you know, uh, I want to pay somebody $5 to mow my meadow, I, I don't really have a lawn, I have a meadow. Okay, it, nice, It's nice. absolutely terrible. I have very little grass, <laughs> you know. But, you know, and, and, so somebody, five bucks, and, yeah. and somebody wants to do it for five bucks. Why, what, why should that be illegal? You know, what happens uh, when you set a minimum wage is you disproportionately hurt people with little experience or no experience, mm -hmm. people that are just trying to get into the workforce. Right. Because, they're tr because they're now competing against people who have a lot more experience, the people uh, with better qualifications, and as an employer, who do you hire? Right. Now, that, now, that, you know, that, now the, you're hurting the people that you're, try that you're ostensibly trying to help when you have the minimum wage. Mm. You know, and if you could get rid of that, you would you would have you know a better functioning market you know um now maybe you know uh you're willing to work for you know 15 or 50 or five dollars or whatever you know but everybody depending upon their own circumstance can decide what you your know, number is what what works for yeah them. yeah um so the you know those those student issues the cost of rising books they're all about the economy. Yeah. So you, so basically, again, just like kind of like some of a couple points here, like in being able to kind of take a look at more inflationary and market issues that are being caused by, uh, by kind of that government overreach, um, as you were saying, like just like getting, just kind of meddling in the things that may be able, may be better treated by just individuals and just the population as a whole coming together. So by like confronting some of those issues along the employment and inflation lines, we can increase jobs, kind of make a few smarter decisions market-wise that we kind of cut down the affordability issues that a lot of people are having across the board. Yeah. Okay. Like, like if you can get a job working for 50 bucks an hour, you know, on an oil rig, yep. you know, uh, you know, for the summer, you're going to make a, you know, a gonna make pretty a good job. chunk, yeah. you know, and that's going to go a long way towards your tuition, mm -hmm. you know, sure. and books and rent and, and all that stuff. Yeah. I think. And beer. Yes. That's for very sure. important <laughs> for students. <laughs> yeah. For sure. or, or maybe gin or rye or whatever, what, whatever, whatever you poison pick your poison. Is. Yeah, exactly. As we were kind of talking about earlier, we were talking a little bit about that mental health support piece and the healthcare piece. Uh, and it's a pressing issue for students and youth as well. It's a large thing that we've heard about on our campuses this year. Like we had eight, like on the federal side of things, 83% of students uh, over, the, over the past year and a half have reported either a, con a mental health condition that they already had that's getting worse or a new one. So that's, there's only 15, there are about 15% of students that are not going through something like that. And it, it, and it is crazy, it's a pressing issue. Um, so in your opinion, like what are some of the ways in which government can just ensure that that mental health of youth and all Nova Scotians across the board is being like prioritized and looked at? <clears throat> they can just stop doing what they're doing to start. Okay, the so what are they doing right now? The lockdowns are not helping. Okay. You know, they, if you look at, uh, you know, infection rates in areas with lockdowns and without lockdowns, mm -hmm. whatever, um, you, you really can't tell the difference. You know, you might be able to say, okay, this one, you know, you know, had a lockdown and this one didn't because quite often, you know, like the, there are slight, slight differences in the, in, uh, in the infection curves yeah. where um, uh, without lockdowns, um, it's uh, front padded yep. and then it levels off more. Okay. And uh, with places with lockdowns, the infections are higher later on, you know, than uh, without the lockdown. <clears throat> but overall, they're pretty close. Yeah. Um, there's there's no good scientific literature to support to support lockdowns. You know. So, like lockdowns, you're saying are just like one of the main 
like basically the main like how do you put that kind of the root cause of a lot of the issues that we're seeing yes yeah you know you're you're isolating people humans are social creatures we need to interact with each other yeah you know this is you know it, it's healthy for us to to just chit chat with each other just visit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whatever yeah for you sure. know um and lockdowns have you know really really you know, exacerbated me mental health issues you know you know, suicides are up as well yeah you know the lockdowns have killed social interaction they've killed business they've killed jobs you know they've so now you're isolated you don't have any money you can't pay your bills you're gonna lose your house you know Obviously, like, like that's going to cause some mental anguish. That's, on yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I can see anxiety levels and depression levels, you know, skyrocketing in those situations. It's right. like you know, it, it's nuts. You know, like these people are adults. Mm -hmm. You know, they're supposed to be able to have the freedom to make their own decisions and yeah. risk assessments. And the thing is, if you're scared to go out, you can stay home. If you feel comfortable to go out, you can go out. Okay. You know, yeah. but there's no need, you know, to, you know, you know, get the band hammer on everyone, you know, just, you know, you know, hammer them into, you know, a, a mental health crisis. Right. Okay. hundred percent. So <coughs> kind of like, and yeah, once again, just to kind of sum up, so like that main root cause of the mental health piece is really just in that social isolation and that like financial insecurity that comes along with everything pandemic wise, everything lockdown wise, sorry, with it throughout the pandemic. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, I'd probably also throw into that, you know, the nonstop media, you know, harping on it. Right. You right. know, like if, if you look at, <coughs> if you look at like, uh, you know, global CTV, CBC, you know, whatever, any of these, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mainstream channels, yeah. um, you're only going to see, you know, three stories. You know, across all of them. That are, you know, uh, you know it, it, they, they don't report any sort of diversity of news. And they're always harping on the disaster, doom. You know, it's constant negativity yeah. all the time. There are good things happening in the world, you know, but, but, yeah, they, but they're not going to report on that. You know, mm -hmm. and, the, and the, if they would, you know, sort of be a little bit more responsible with their jur journalism and a little bit more proportionate. You know, and uh, that would help as well. Yeah, for sure. So as we were talking about, especially when students, youth, Nova Scotians across the board don't have that, like, that work experience or are looking for that employment here that they might not be able to find, we're seeing like a large amount heading out, but then around like age 60, 65. And because students love it here, students want to be able to come back and live here, they want to be able to live their lives out here because it's a beautiful province, especially for the kids internationally, uh, out of province that come here, you want to be able to stay. Sp speaking at, as an out of province student, I would love to be able to stay. But some of the issues that we've seen, uh, especially for those that have to leave to find work, is that they will leave and then maybe never make it back. So like, our question for you is just, as a province, how do you believe, like, how can we better support and incentivize student retention and also just retention of folk that may need to leave for those, for whatever reason it may be? <clears throat> just a, a quick comment before yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. Um, you know, at the uh, Antigonish uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, you know, meet the candidates. Yeah. I think I pissed off some people, you know, when I said Nova Scotia is not a go-to place. It's a place to leave, you know, and people did not like that. They weren't a fan, huh? you know. You know because that's not something nice to say about the problems. Right, one hundred percent. Yeah, like uh, you know, people leave Nova Scotia, they don't come here. Fair you know, enough. and you know. So why do you they, think it's a place to leave? For the last or, couple, or is it just the way that things are? Right for the now? last couple, the thing is, for the last couple decades, the population, you know, increase, decrease, whatever, has been basically flat. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's gone up a little bit. Oh, whoop de do. Okay. Yeah. Over the last a couple decades. You know, the population of Canada has gone up a little bit over 23%. So the population of Canada is going up like this, and Nova Scotia is flat. Why? Because people don't want to come here. 
because there are no opportunities. You know, uh, if, if you're young in Nova Scotia, what happens? You go to Ontario or BC or Alberta, you know, or the States or something, you go somewhere else for opportunities because your opportunities here are limited. Because the government, you know, is always restricting uh, things like nat natural resource development. You know, we could develop our natural resources in environmentally friendly, clean, sustainable ways. It would. But no, no, not going to do that. Mm. You know, you can have jobs in Nova Scotia. Uh, uh, I, I, the corporate uh, tax uh, for uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, tax revenue yeah. for Nova Scotia is 3.6% of the budget. That's not that much money. And we have, we have the, the highest taxes in, in Canada, it's 16%. Right. You know, for, uh, for the, uh, um, for the small business rate, it is 3%. So, but now, if you just get rid of that, yeah. you're gonna attract a lot of business. You know, because like, no tax, what? This is heaven for them. Right. You know, and th that will create infrastructure and, you know, jobs and, you know, it will help drive the economy. On its own. But, you know, like, even if you simply eliminated the small business tax, which brings in nothing, it's absolutely not worth, you know, talking it's about. It's just 3% of you know, all it, the small business revenue. But it, well, all of it is 3.6%. But, you know, the small yeah. business part is negligible. Right. Um, the, if you even if you just got rid of that and cut, you know the sixteen percent of uh, uh, corporate uh, taxes. Um, there are two tiers: you know, the small business and then corporate. Right. Uh, cut that from sixteen to eight percent. You would have m m massive migration of companies into Nova Scotia. You know uh, because that's eight percent in Canada. Uh, wherever your company is headquartered is where you pay your taxes. Right. So if you have, you know, multi-billion dollar companies setting up, you know, in Nova Scotia, you know, whether that's in Halifax or Anaganish or, or wherever, wherever it may be. you know, um, they're, they pay their taxes into the provincial coffers here. You're gonna cut the tax rate, your revenues are just gonna skyrocket massively. Because companies wanna set up yeah. In your problems, yeah. Because the, uh, otherwise, I think the lowest uh, is eleven and a half percent. I could check. Um, let me see. Uh, these might be a little bit old. Uh, yeah, ele uh, the Northwest Territories, eleven and a half percent corporate tax rate, and Ontario, eleven and a half percent. Yeah, uh, uh, corporate tax. So you know, if you're given, <coughs> you know three and a half points. That's a lot of money for, for, a, a, for a multi-billion yeah. dollar uh, corporation. It's a lot. You know, so there, there are ways, you know, to improve the economy that cost you nothing. That's just, uh, that's just a stroke of a pen. Change you the know, number. Change the number from, you know, 16 to eight. Right. You know, eight to four or zero or, or whatever. And you're going to get the, the economy going. You're going to get, you know, the money that you need, you know, in the provincial coffers to take care of some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. You know, the question is just how do you pay for it? Yeah. And that's kind of the next step of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just overall, really got to be able to open that up, change some of the existing policies around taxation and just business so that we can kind of incentivize that job creation and then that incentivizes people to want to stay for opportunities. Yeah, you know, you, you, you won't have out migration, you will have in migration because, because you'll changed. be creating so many opportunities for people here mm -hmm. that, the, you know, that your youth are going to stay here. A lot of families are going to come back from the oil fields in Alberta, right. you know, because they got family here and that this is where they want to be and now there are opportunities, exactly. you know, and you're going to start attracting people from other places, you know, mm -hmm. simply because it's a better place to do business, it's a better place to, you know, get jobs. Right, right. Basically, we know that COVID-19 has like disproportionately impacted uh, some groups over others, and then also further exacerbated like existing inequalities in our society that were here before. So uh, like our general kind of question uh, to you, as well as like just the general like Atlantic Party is like what kinds of policies, like, and if any, so 
uh, feel free to go on that side if you if you will. Uh, will you and your party pursue to kind of pr to promote social and racial justice uh, in our community? <clears throat> There's an uh, article on our uh, website uh, where we basically reject identity politics. Okay. Um, you know, categorically, you know, we uh, the Atlantic Party, you know, rejects uh, Marxism, neo-Marxism, postmodern neo-Marxism, uh, critical okay. theory, and uh, th and these other uh, offshoots of Marxism. So, what does that necessarily have to do with like social and racial justice? Is because that's it. Is because you're getting those ideas uh, through Marxist through Marxists or neo-Marxists. Um, the okay. Uh, just, let's just go through a little bit of history. Hegel and his, his historicism, whatever you know, Marx picks up on uh, Hegel's historicism and comes up with his like you know freaky historicist, you know proletariat, you know bourgeoisie class struggle, whatever, yep, yep. blah blah blah. Uh, by the 1920s, um, the academics realize that you know Marxism has failed. The proletariat never uh, there was never any rose revolution. up, right. you know, against uh, the, the bourgeoisie. Um, the revolution in uh, uh, the uh, in Russia, which became the Soviet Union, yeah. uh, th 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 that's Marxist Leninism, which is just simply you know violent Marxism. Yeah. You know, Marx uh, you know kind of thought you know like the, the proletariat would simply you know, come up and do this. So anyway, you know this this class struggle failed. <clears throat> uh, fast forward, you know, a few decades, they kind of, they kind of figure things out that um, what they need to do is instead of framing it as a class issue, uh, frame it as just, uh, you know, a, a, a victim oppressor. And uh, critical theory is, uh, is, uh, is sort of the methodology through uh, which it is done. Yeah. What is critical theory? You know, it is that which is to be criticized. It's entirely destructive. It's, it's not productive. Okay. The um, so the part of critical theory, uh, you know, goes into critical race theory, and this is where you're getting all the stuff about you know uh, racial justice and and all this kind of stuff and whatever. Um, you know, uh, we simply reject you know uh, th th that. Uh, neo-Marxist strain of, uh, you know, authors, uh, philosophies, you okay. know, um, the, they're basically against the Western Enlightenment, um, and the, the kind of thought, the kind of philosophy that you'll find in the Atlantic Party is more from the Western Enlightenment in thinkers like uh, John Stuart Mill. Um, at the, on our policy page, you know, at, at the very top is a quote, uh, by John Stuart Mill from On Liberty. Let me just get my uh, reading glasses. Uh, take your time. The liberty of the ind individual must thus far. Uh, uh, sorry. No the worries. liberty of the ind individual must be thus far limited. He must not make himself a nuisance to other people. Okay. You know, give people freedom. Right now, we have you know uh, postmodern neo Marxists you know pushing all kinds of authoritarianism. You know, on people, and you know, this is not what we are about. We're about trying to, you know, give people freedom. Okay. You know, and you know, believe in people that they're going to go out and you know, do good. Do right. Really in in the uh, uh, guiding principles at the very top for the Atlantic Party, all individuals have the same inherent rights. <clears throat> Your postmodern uh, postmodern neo Marxists, critical theorists, and whatnot are uh, collectivists. Uh, Marxism is collectivism. I understand collectivism, yeah. You know, uh, we are individuals. We believe in the individual. Okay. You know, um, you don't judge someone on, their, on uh, their race, the color of their skin. You judge them on an individual basis. You know, there are, there are good white people, there are bad white people. There are good bl black people, there are, you know, bad black people. And, you know, in any group whatsoever, you're gonna have a spectrum of you know, uh, morality or ethics and whatnot, and, okay. so, and some people do good things, some people do bad things. Right. And we need to judge people individually, not on a collective basis, okay. because that collective guilt 
does not work out well. We saw that in the 20th century, mm. and it ended up in mass murder. You know, uh, democide. If you look at R.J. Rummel's, you know, uh, uh, site, uh, uh, mm. you know, um, power kills. You know, you can see how uh, collectivists kill. You know, murdered. You know, hundreds of millions of people. You know, right. The, it it so doesn't it's just work out. Kind of taking things more on like an individual basis, and then also kind of yeah, just kind of breaking it down into looking at people like everybody has the same rights but treating people more on the basis of individuals rather than looking at the effects of like of certain like communities or certain like <clears throat> yes also the Pareto principle it is a real thing mm. you know 20 percent of the people 20 percent of the people produce 80 percent of the results and that works inside of you okay. know that 20 percent again Right. This is why you see, um, you know, like uh, you, you, way out, you know, if you, if you look on a, you know, sort of a normal distribution curve, yep. you see way out here, you know, your people like Jeff uh, Bezos, you know, he's way the hell out there on that point. I know, why, yeah. You know, he's, you know, uh, there are people in extreme poverty as well. Um, the, the issue of equality is fine. You know, we, we're all equal as individuals. The issue of equity, of wealth redistribution is another matter. Right. Because you have, you know, people, uh, you know, making, you know, insane amounts of money. And very often, and what do they do? They get, you know, they get bored. They start, you know, giving to charities. You know, they start, you know, uh, you, know you know, funding, you know, third world villages or whatever, you know, that, They've got to do something with that money, something productive, right? You know, and they're more qualified to do something productive, as they have proven, than you know, like you or me, because I'm not a billionaire, right? You know, <laughs> you don't have the funds to, you know, like uh, you know, I have not produced that amount of value, mm. you know, um, the you know, money in uh, many ways is a an indicator of how much you have helped other people. Okay. Now, um, yeah, not always. That's a different way of looking at it. Not yeah. always. You know, mm -hmm. that is not always true. Yeah. But it is one indicator. So, like, Jeff Bezos, you know, has Amazon and has created a marketplace where all kinds of different manufacturers or whatever, uh, you know, retailers can come in. Congregate. Uh, you know, congregate, put product. their products, get them out to people, you know, uh, cheaply and efficiently, yeah. you know, and build a build their own small businesses. Awful. And uh, and Amazon gets paid for that. You know, they they're, they they create a huge amount of value. Right. Um, you know, like uh, I'm not saying that I you know necessarily like Jeff Bezos or anything like that. Yeah. You know, um, you know Bill Gates. You know, you know same thing. You know, like he's done a lot of things. I'm not saying that I like Bill Gates. But yeah, um, like like strictly speaking, like they created the mainframe to be able to help others build their brand. Yeah. You know, it, capitalism is, is very is very simple. It's a voluntary interaction where uh, you or I have, you know, uh, products or services and, you know, I want what you have and, you know, we agree on a price. Mm -hmm. I give you some money, you give me you know, a product, you know, or I have a service yep. and, you know, we agree on a price and I give that to you. And maybe there's someone out there, you know, that has a better service than me. And all of a sudden, you stop using my service, and you go and use them, you know, because it's better than mine. Okay. And I look at it and say, oh, geez, you know, I bet I better improve. Competition, mm -hmm. you know, and that uh, human incentive, you know, to do better is what drives wealth creation. You know, the, the, the social justice narrative of equity and wealth redistribution doesn't create wealth. It destroys it because it destroys your incentive to do anything because if, if you're just going to take all my money you know that i make why should i work mm. yeah you know um so uh yeah i know a, a lot of my answers are, are very very similar um you know but it's, it's just you know you know getting back to you know that voluntary interaction of you know uh of uh, capitalism with free markets you know and individuals 
right. you know, can make decisions for themselves, you know, and create wealth. For sure. Oh no, I think I think uh, even even if the end result of some of these questions, like the an- the answer, sorry, is like even the slightest bit similar. I think that overall, uh, you've given like very different answers to each depending on the situation, and it it, it makes sense. So I'll uh, so thank you for the response on the equity piece. Uh, I'll keep going down. Just got like two short like last uh, questions. One of which is kind of like what would your message be to sh- to students that are either their first time showing up uh, at the polls like this provincial election maybe their second time but like what would your message be to those students that are showing up this time around or students that may not be decided on whether they should show up and are just wanting to be part of the process um well first you know vote atlantica vote for free markets you know <laughs> um uh, but it, 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 we're not going to win. Uh, we know that. You know, Randy is, pro- is get, probably going to win this. You know, I think Michelle has a small chance. Uh, okay. Moreg, no way she's getting in. Will, no way the Greens are going to win. You know, it's either uh, the Liberals or the PCs here. Okay. Um, but they should, you know, look into the policies of uh, the parties, you know, and not just look into the policies. But look into the underlying philosophies and ideologies and, you know, like the, the authors, you know, that uh, have created these frameworks that the, that the different parties are uh, working on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, see what, see what you like, see what you agree with. Mm-hmm. Don't vote tribally. Vote for policy. Okay. Vote, vote for, you know, uh, you know platforms. Yeah. You know, um, tribal politics is excuse me, is killing us. You know, um, it's, it's uh, created massive division, you know, hatred, it's, divi- it's dividing mm-hmm. families, it's, you know, uh, you know alienating friends uh, and co-workers, you know, because, you know, I'm on this side and you're on that side. And we'll never see eye to eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, at, uh, where I work, you know, like, uh, you know, I've, I've pretty much, you know, expressed, you know, <clears throat> uh, my position, uh, my, I haven't fully expressed my position. I'm a voluntarist. You know, I believe in voluntary interaction. People can look at it up there. Um, one of the guys that I work with, and we get along very well. We're friends. Yeah. yeah. He's a Marxist Leninist. Okay. So you guys are on opposite sides. So we are on job. exactly opposite sides. Yeah. We can joke around and be friends with each other. We can be adults about this, you know? You don't have to be a jackass just because, you know, you, somebody disagrees with you. Right. You know, it's possible to actually act in good faith, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, approach, you know, uh, uh, for the students, you know, looking at the, the policies and that, approach it in good faith. Yep. You know, um, when you see a, a policy or argument, you know, uh, you know, on either side, you know, steel man them you know what is the strongest case here what is the strongest case here how do these uh, ideas compete yeah. against each other you know uh, and you know don't try to create s- straw men and and whatnot you know good faith p- produces good results fair enough no that's i think that's a great message like really weigh in taking a look at the platforms and taking a look at the policies is always a super important thing in any election and it like breaking out of that realm of just I'm gonna vote this way because I know that X Y Z friend is gonna be voting this way. I completely agree with you, and I think that's a great message to be passing out. What's your go-to pizza place in Antigonish County? <laughs> I always end up uh, ordering from uh, Greco Pizza down on James Street. Oh yeah, Greco. <laughs> yeah, and what's your order? What's your type? Well, you know, very often, you know, I basically just order, you know, for my daughter. Okay, nice, nice. You know, um, so, you know, she likes pepperoni pizza. You Beautiful. Know. She doesn't like, you know, pineapple on her pizza and whatnot. <laughs> and so it's just like, you know, maybe double pepperoni and double cheese, you know. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, and you know what? That's, uh, that's all the questions that I've got for, uh, for today, Ryan, if, uh, if, unless you've got anything else to add. No, um, you, uh, people, if they want, they can uh, go to the atlanticaparty.ca website. You know, um, they can find 
my email address there on the candidates page if they want to email me, ask any questions. Um, I try to respond, you know, <clears throat> as quickly as possible, but uh, I may not be as timely. Okay. Uh, uh, simply because you know my workload is pretty big. Oh, at for the sure. Moment. Oh, yeah, and it's a heated time in the election, but uh, we'll be sure to put that info out. And thanks again for coming and uh, speaking to the students today. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see it up there. Yeah, thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a ton, Ryan.